good morning and I'm happy that we are starting with this very, I think, very simple subject. Uh, the others one are going to be more complicated. But um, everyone, I think, is familiar with this problem that uh, we have a patient, especially when you have a kind of strategy that you are trying to optimize lung volumes and PEEP. Um, and then you, you have some disconnection of the patient, either because the nursing is doing some cleaning on the patient or because you are doing some suctioning in the areas. Suctioning is the worst. And I have had personally many cases, dramatic cases, that it's really scaring. So it's life-threatening situation for some patients. And typically what happens is represented here. This is EIT, but this represents lung volume. During the disconnection, and, uh, and especially during the suction, we see two drops. One of the drops is just because you are losing your PEEP, and then there is a further drop because of the suctioning. Typically, we measure uh, sometimes people say that they regulate the pressures, uh, and uh, there is some loss to regulate the pressures. But in fact, uh, everyone likes, uh, let's say, a stronger vacuum because it, you get more secretions. And then at the end, the, the average we, we, we did in, we, we checked in our hospital. So for security issues, you should be using 80 or 80 this millimeters of mercury of vacuum. Uh, but people use 150, sometimes 200. So anyway, um, and then when you do it, uh, you typically have this response. So then the patient is reconnected and it's already in a completely different situation and does not go back to the same FRC. The FiO2 is, uh, the, the P you have a deterioration in oxygenation and you can see here that we, we had a deterioration in compliance because this, this patient was under pressure control ventilation and then the tidal volume is, is smaller and he lost uh, ventilation in the dorsal areas of the lung. So we have been doing this often. This is a case in our ICU. I was trying documenting because the, the, the physiotherapists, they were telling us that they were very careful with this. And we can clearly see that when you have this red uh, zone is because we lost compliance in all these regions here. So uh, even if they tried their best to, to make it quickly and in the most, uh, let's say, in, um, let's say soft way. So we tested, the, so we decided to check if the, the, the new tool uh, with the app was, was working. So we used uh, nine animals. In fact, we used in total 14 animals. Uh, even more because <laughs> if you do experimental research you know that you sometimes you have to repeat some experiments and some animals they they get to the lab si with sickness and then you have to discard the data. Uh, we, we used eight, eight animals just to check uh, the variables that were affecting and then we realized that uh, we are trying to understand what makes the suctioning worse. Uh, and there was a controversy in the literature saying that sometimes in some papers open suctioning is worse than closed systems. But there is vice versa. Some papers showing that closed system could be worse. So we are trying to understand what, what is worse, open or closed, pressure control or volume control, and, um, and also um, what is the, let's say, the... The, the influence of the size of the tube and the size of the catheter. So all these factors uh, have uh, some influence. So at the end, I'm going to summarize how, how it stands today. So, so basically, the new tool from uh, Orange Med was designed to do it precisely like this, right? So this is, the, let's say, the bad aspiration, and this is the good one. So which was the idea? The idea is that um, when you start doing the suctioning, the suctioning is inside the endotracheal tube. Then the ventilator has to compensate and, and send some air with some extra pressure 
to compensate, and this does not uh, have any impact in the amount of secretions. In fact, sometimes you have even the impression that you get more secretions because there is uh, lots of flow and then uh, the vacuum is very efficient because you are giving some extra pressure. Uh, and then we, we, we took us some time to understand how much extra pressure you need to compensate. And then at the end, uh, we empirically, we, we, de we, we, we came to this following conclusion. You need a little bit higher PEEP. You have to increase it two centimeters of water. You need a pressure control ventilation as a backup. Even if you are using volume control, you need a pressure control with a backup of 12 centimeters of water, which is relatively safe. So you have two more centimeters of order of PEEP, a backup of pressure control ventilation, and you need a high sensitivity of the ventilator because it's even better when the ventilator is triggering many times. And if you look at here, you see there is a high frequency of cycles like here, okay? Because then it's, uh, it's going to inspiratory pressure, which compensates a little bit better. So then we started to use we calibrated the system and then we started to use and then we were trying to avoid this. And then we came to a reasonable number. It's not going to be perfect because it depends pretty much on the size of the tube and, and catheter that you are using. But uh, this worked in average uh, without causing any, we, we, we never saw a case in which we are having overinflation that you are, you'd see this lung volume increasing. So never happened. So I think it was a kind of trial and error. Um, and uh, so, and typically also we assessed the with EIT, we calculated how much of the lung was collapsed. And uh, the more the red here, the more collapse it is. And then when we use the good system, we have this. Okay. Um, so now, final results. So I think we, we measured four variables. Compliance, FRC, which is end expiratory lung volume. I can estimate in mLs because we calibrate the signal uh, from the impedance tomography in terms of mLs because we have a pneumotax. So I can cor have a linear correspondence between um, <coughs> impedance and lung volume. And uh, PO2, obviously, and how much of the lung uh, got collapsed. And this is percentage of lung mass. Uh, EIT is very much proportional to number, it's percentage, of, percentage of units that you, you can gain or you, you can miss. And then uh, what happened is that when the app was on is red when it was off in black and uh, we see almost everything here is very significant you 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 miss <coughs> and you have a reduction in frc every time you don't use the app and when you use the app you can keep it even if you're using a very high peep level so the same for the po2 and um, all the results here they are significant and then we, just to illustrate the, 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 the situation, pay attention that this is pressure control ventilation. Then uh, the app, when the app is off, it's not that bad, right? So it's not, but the one, once you go to volume control <coughs> ventilation, look at the difference. In volume control, the situation can be very bad. Why? Because the ventilator is delivering a constant flow and then it's very possible that your catheter is suctioning much more air than the ventilator is delivering. It is, it's different in pressure control because the ventilator compensates somehow. So especially in volume control, the difference is dramatic. So, and then look, look, these guys, they, 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 they had a reduction in compliance of 40%. So they got to 60%. So it's a big change. It means that your driving pressure is going to increase 40%. Big drop in PO2, 
So this is in percentage because from the animals were at 100%, so the numbers are very high. So you come from a PO2 of 300 and it goes down to 100 again in some animals. And you can see here that they can have 40% of the parenchyma collapsed. So this was the worst case, volume control ventilation. Um, in this uh, scenario, uh, the size of the tube didn't m make a big difference. I think the, m the most important difference was the mode of ventilation. Again, pressure control, it's significant, but it's not a, a big change. Uh, but in volume control, the situation was always uh, very bad. This is just another way of uh, showing the results. So, in conclusion, uh, there are many papers already in the literature about this, and they, uh, I think we could understand why there is some controversy, because it depends pretty much on the, the, the settings that he did the experiment. Uh, if he was using pressure control, uh, typically the closed system works better than the open system. But if you are using volume control, the closed system is worse because you have this problem. So especially when you are using volume control, and this is very important for United States because they typically, I, I was, in the last week I was talking with Roy Brower. Uh, Roy Brower is still the lead uh, investigator of the PETO uh, network and the ArtsNet network. And they really like volume control because when the patient is doing a, a big effort, they like to control transpulmonary pressure with volume control, despite the risk of breath stacking. But they like it to do this. And then for them, I think this, uh, especially here for the United States, this is going to be an, a very important tool. Uh, but also for us, that because we like to use ideal PEEP and we take care to not disconnect the patient after setting the proper PEEP and after a recruiting maneuver, especially in this situation, this is going to be really nice. That's it. Thank you.